Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on yet another classic Mitchell reel. And a lot of folks uh, wonder why I do the different versions of them. And I do them because, well, sometimes when YouTube gets searched, it, people don't realize that the DNA is very similar in a lot of these reels. And also because I want to show you how to do it yourself and the variations on these reels. This is the Mitchell 410. It's a high speed reel. This looks almost identical to the 300. This one's got a bail trip issue with it. It's uh, dancing up top. And uh, this belongs to Ken. And Ken had asked me to tune it up. He'd like to take it fishing. He'd also like me to solve the bail trip issue. Well, we'll do that as part of the service. We'll show you why that's failing, uh, some of the problem diagnosis you can do on it, and uh, how to get this wheel fishing again in time for the summer season. So we're going to start by taking off the exterior pieces and parts, and uh, we'll show you a little bit of the similarities and differences, and we'll show you how to address this bale issue. And maybe we can start right there. So if your bale is firing, but not completing the turn, that usually means that the spring inside of the bale is working fine. So you, you can leave that spring in place until you do a couple of other tests. And once you complete those other tests, well, I may tell you that you have a weak spring. Well, we're going to start by taking off the screw on this side, and we're going to test it further. And while I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like the uh, art of fishing wheel repair, if you like to learn how fishing wheels are made, if you like to understand the differences between some of the more modern reels and the, the vintage reels, well, I work on them all. Uh, the channel is really to show you how to do it yourself and to increase your understanding of fishing reels in general. Well, I just noticed this bale loosened up an awful lot when I took a turn or two out of there. So let's see if it fires normally. And it does. You can just see it returns without the dancing. And that was all because I just loosened that screw up. Well, that's not the solution. That's not the repair. But the cause of the problem is that there's too much tension on that screw when it's properly secured. And that's why you get the bouncing. Well, how does that tension occur? That tension occurs because this bale, which is a wire, uh, probably bumps something. And when it bumps something, it probably hit it this way and pushed this leg of the arm away. And when it pushes it away, the, uh, the cause is that it goes against that screw, makes it too tight. And you can see, without doing anything, this bale can, wire here at the footing continues to move out. You can see that that's not sitting there. And, but it, you can see the tension in there, right? Well, that's the cause of why this thing is hanging up in mid-stroke. I'm going to just push that button and take this spool off so that you can see it a little bit better. And what's the solution? Well, sometimes it almost seems too easy. Just pick your bail up, pull it in a little bit, and bend it back to where it's sitting there without tension. Now let's see if that makes it fire nice. It makes it fire nice, right? And when you go to put the screw in now, it's not going to back off. So as easy as that is, it's probably the most common cause of a bale misfiring in a fishing reel. So take a look at a couple of things when you go to service your fishing reel. Take a look to see if you have a nice even and rounded arc on that bale wire. Okay, well we've tightened the screw. No more take a no more backed off there. You have a nice rounded edge. Let's give it a try, effortlessly. That's what you're looking for. Now, what you want to do as well, since this hasn't been used in a while, just flush it away with a little bit of penetrating oil, and that'll just loosen up any dirt that may be caused in there. So that's how you do a bale that's dancing in the middle of the reel, like a ball ballerina, I guess. Well, let's service the rest of this reel while we're at it. We're going to uh, make sure that Ken can take this one fishing soon, and uh, we're going to make sure that it's nice and clean and uh, everything is correct inside. I'm going to start just by one crack of the handle, 
And then I'm going to start removing the exterior pieces. I like to crack the handle first because in removing the main gear, uh, you're going to need a little bit of leverage and you're not going to have that leverage once you take the side plate off. There's three screws that connect the side plate to this. And this is a high speed version of your uh, Mitchell basic, the th basically the 300 series. The high speed version has a bigger main gear and it also has ball bearings on the handle side. So you need to be aware of that. It's got a roller bearing and when you go to take that apart you need to be aware that it's there and you want to treat that one carefully. Alright, here's the three screws that come out now to remove the side plate. This one has got a uh, dog that's going to, to have a spring that sets against here. We'll show you how to set that. Otherwise, this reel seems to be in very nice condition. Just a much bigger main gear and uh, we'll be able to, uh, to work with that. Here's your anti-reverse torque spring that just came off. We'll show you how to service the side plates and the reel itself. Let's start by removing our uh, gear that's going to be moving our oscillation gear, our oscillation gear itself, which has got three tabs on it. Pay attention to that. It's got the slider, and that slider, when removed, allows you to remove the axle shaft from the reel. We'll put all of those pieces and parts into my parts tray. And my parts tray is, well, it's the base of a fast food container. But I do recommend that you have a system that you can use to order your parts so that you know where they are. These are the two screws that hold the, uh, the slide itself in place. That's going to allow for oscillation. You've got that slider that's going to move up and down on that. And that's going to allow you for the oscillation itself. But when you do a real service, you want to clean that reel. And in this case, we wanted to remove that slider so that we can get to the old greases and the like underneath. And this one is in good condition. I've seen all kinds of horrible conditioned reels uh, in the Mitchell line, but this one is in good condition. There's a 12 millimeter nut that's holding this on now. And if I can find my little Mitchell tool, that would be this thing. It's a deep socket for a 12 millimeter nut. If you don't have that tool, don't rush out and buy it. They're hard to find to begin with, but you don't need to buy it. Just use a deep socket, uh, 12 millimeter wrench. You can't get it in with a wrench like this, right? It, it's not going to grab it. You need to use the deep socket. With that nut removed, now you're going to be able to remove the whole rotor assembly so that we can clean the case and then we'll come back and service the rotor. I like to use cotton swabs. In this case I guess I can say Q-tip because it actually is a Q-tip. And you want to make sure you get all the dirt out of there. There is a copper washer on the bottom of that shaft. Don't lose it. If you have trouble, if you have sticky uh, grease in there, use a squirt of penetrating oil. That will help clean up that debris. And when you do this, make sure you get the debris out of that little uh, oil case there. A lot of folks ask me what that little screw is on the bottom. You can remove the screw and a squirt of oil will work its way up and down the channel there to keep the axle shaft uh, moving nice and easily. Let's just do a little bit of a mop up here with the paper towel. So what we've seen so far in difference and similarities, the case is similar. The design is identical in terms of the engineering behind it. The difference here is that you have bigger gears and you'll have a roller bearing on the other case. Okay, with that done now, it doesn't hurt to take some of the parts that are laying around on your bench and put them back into position. So I'm just going to take the slide and do that. The slide has two sides. It has an opening here and it has a squared off side on top. On your opening side, if you notice the uh, grid for that oscillation gear, there's a stud sticking out. So that stud is going to go in that ride. And when you replace this now, 
it's going to go base down. Before I do that, I want to just take a little bit of fishing reel grease. I'm using pen precision reel grease. And put it into the channel so that I have a nice slide for the axle shaft. I'm also going to put a little bit on the back here where that axle shaft is actually going to contact the slide. And then again, when you go to reset it, just align the two screw holes and the long side uh, of that slot goes down. I'm going to use a, a screw starter here. It's uh, convenient for me. I have trouble with small screws. If you don't have trouble with small screws, you don't need this. You don't need the screw starter. Grab this side, put that in. I'm going to leave the rest of that off for a moment. We're going to go over to the rotor assembly. The rotor assembly has a baffle plate on it. The baffle plate has a tongue that comes down and intersects with the uh, travel arm for the trip. This is your trip for your bale. When you go into the trip position like this, it's going to move the, the arm out. And when it contacts this little ridge, it's going to poke it back, allowing the bale to fire. Well, we hose the outside of that. There's a little bit of dried greases on that nut and around that washer which is going to pivot point that little firing pin so it doesn't hurt to clean that up. Make sure that screw is tight. If you've taken this off and you're wondering how it goes, the first thing that you're going to find is you have a hook for a spring like that and you might be wondering where that hook goes. Well there's a notch in this trip lever here. That's where it goes. And most of the time you can probably work it by your finger strength or something. If you can't, use a little pliers. And now you have that set properly. On your uh, rotor, there's a couple of shim washers. They differ by the amount of uh, washers needed to align this baffle plate properly. Underneath there is that roller bearing I'm talking about. You have a roller bearing on the inside of the shaft. On the 300 you do not have that. It's uh, simply a bushing. This one is a roller bearing. I oil roller bearings, again using fishing reel oil. And I want to be very careful with that roller bearing when I go to put it back in. Because if you knock those bearings out of alignment you're going to have some difficulty putting this back on. So just slide that down. I like to keep my finger on that roller bearing. You can see we almost uh, pushed it out as it was. And uh, well, the first one that I wiped off is the shield for that bearing itself. So we've oiled that. We have a baffle plate and two more bearings, uh, uh, two more shim washers here that are copper and a top washer which is more metal. And I'm taking those off so that I can clean the back of the baffle plate. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, uh, maybe you're working on one and you, you've got a little issue with it or you can't get it to go back the way it came off or something, or maybe you don't know the positioning of a part, leave that question in the uh, comment section. I do try to respond to those. All right, there's two more of these. Again, they differ by reels. You may find that you only have two in there, or you may find that you have more. I don't, I don't think I've seen more than this, but you may find it. And sometimes you'll find that the adjusters are actually under the top nut because, well, only one or two were needed to get that proper height. If you're changing the rotor on the reel, you need to make sure that you adjust accordingly for the uh, shim washers. The rotor may have a little bit of a different uh, dimension to it and not need another shim. There's a little tag that's on that baffle plate right here that fits in a slot. That's going to align the baffle slot so that the bale trips at the right point. So make sure that you have that tag on the baffle set into that little groove when you mount the rotor. Now I'm going to just set the rotor nut in and we'll use that adjuster little Mitchell tool to uh, Set that right. When you're uh, ready, give it a spin. 
make sure that it spins nicely. I'm going to clean the inside of the bowl of this. There's a little bit of dust and dirt and the like in there. If you want to try, you can fire your, your bell right now. And that's doing everything it should do very nicely. So Ken, uh, no issue with the bell to report in other than it was a little sticky and a little bent out of shape. Well, I have the spool here. You only have a, one uh, drag washer on there. You have all the pressure up top here, but it doesn't hurt to service this. To do that, pick out your drag assembly. You have your Teflon washer below. You also have a little cushion washer underneath here. You can push this through. Take a look. In this case, we don't have that. Normally on the 300, you would have a, a, a washer here. They've put that up top. That's fine. When you go to set this now, you have that as a trip spring. When you put it on, to set it properly, just turn it backwards until you hear the click. Don't turn it forwards. That'll lock it. All right. Teflon washers don't get anything. They uh, simply are... Uh, self-lubricating. When you go to put this on, there's one flat side. So center that. Push that down. And I think right now what I'll do is I'll just put a little squirt of my all-purpose cleaner and my penetrating oil and run it around the inside of the spool to get any dirt and debris off of that. Also doesn't hurt. I'm going to use a little rod and reel cleaner here on that button. I'm using pen rod and reel cleaner. I'm also using pen precision reel grease for this, in case you're wondering. Reel grease and oil. They're universal. You don't need Mitchell greases and Shimano greases and Okuma greases. And if you want to do that, that's fine. I'm not saying you don't. You shouldn't use it. I'm just saying you don't need to use it. All right. Well, I don't know when the last time that Ken put the the line on this reel, I always recommend when you have the reel service, change the line, particularly if it's monofilament. Monofilament's relatively inexpensive, and uh, why lose the big fish? Because you're fishing on the line. Uh, we still got a little bit of rod and reel cleaner on there. Let's right put it around, make sure that the spool is nice and clean. And uh, well, next up we can service the side plate here. Service the gearing. And get this one back out there fishing again. Move the handle. You have the gear that's going to drive off the main gear to drive the uh, rotor. We have the main gear. We're going to remove that. That also has the roller bearing on it. So again, be careful with that. We're going to just put a couple of drops of oil onto there. So for the pins, we're going to inspect all of the teeth to make sure that they're clean and teeth on the inside as well. This is an aluminum gear. Once you've inspected, get a good amount of fishing reel grease into the teeth. And I don't grease those roller bearings because I think greasing a lot of times on roller bearings traps dirt and then causes them to perform poorly. While I have the rotor, I could have done this earlier. While well, I have the grease brush out, I put some grease into the teeth of the bottom side of the rotor. That's going to be driven by that other brass or brass like piece there. And before I get too crazy, let's show you about this anti, -re anti reverse dog here. This is a white plastic piece. If yours is gray or black, don't worry it. You have a little circle here. If you've taken it out, if you took the cover off and you're wondering how in the world this goes back, there's a little circle there. And there's a spring with a hook. The spring goes to load like that. It's, I think it's probably the only way. I guess you could put it any other way. That's incorrect. I'll put it on that way. So that's your correct side. Now that we have that out of there, we can go clean up the greases from the, the old uh, fork. Now, 
there's a small brass washer that goes on that post. If you see it's missing, check the back like I just did to so make sure that you have that so that it will perform properly. That's your washer. Sometimes you'll find two on there. Again, it's like the shim up top that we were looking at before. Inspect the teeth on the back end of the, the drive and on the front end it's going to intersect with your pinion, uh, your pinion gear or the rotor gear. With that roller bearing oiled, it's time for reassembly. Just simply insert it. Be careful as you put it in. Again, it's a little bit trickier than uh, the basic one that does not have that roller bearing there. I like to take the handle at this point and put that on to hold that bearing in place. Okay, let's take a look at what, what remains in the service and we'll show you how to put it all back together again. Let's take the anti-reverse dog. Now I've got that spring in there. You don't need it in there right now. The dog goes on the post that's the lowest to the left. Just like that. The one tag is over the semi circle here. The other one is flat. And how do you, where's that spring mount? You simply push it in and it rides on the inside of the case right along here. That's how it's properly set. Next up then we can take the one that we just cleaned, checked, and now we'll re-grease. This is going to transition the energy from the main gear on the back here to turn the gear that's acting as a pinion gear on the rotor. I'm getting a good amount of grease there. Don't forget that that little washer is there and just mesh it in like that. The other gear that needs to be on this side is the gear that's going to drive the oscillation gear. So we have two more gears here. We have one that kind of looks like a hat and the other one that has the three prongs. That's your oscillation gear. The one that looks like a hat is going to drive it. Again, these are very clean. If you needed to clean them, use your penetrating oil. In all cases, check the teeth to make sure that the gears are uh, in good condition, that they're not bent, no chipped or missing teeth, and so on. You'll know that if you have a uh, reel you're working on and it's acting erratically, the chances are it's a tooth issue. Okay, I always get it wrong in terms of which one is which, but it's not hard to do. Just make sure that the teeth on this gear intersect with the teeth on the main gear's smaller gear section. This is going to drive the oscillation system. Well, that's what's left here is the oscillation system. We're going to wipe down the primary axle shaft. A little bit of grease. Now remember, we put grease in here already when we service this from a slot standpoint. Go ahead and bring that in. There's only one way this can get through and that's with the flat side coming that way. Clean your little carrier. Find the stud. The stud is going to go into the hole in the axle. Just a light amount of grease we put there. Somehow I got a little piece of tape on there. I don't want that in there. A little bit of grease onto the slide. Turn it over and make sure that you put the stud into the hole in the axle shaft. When you do, it will be laying flat in that carrier and you can simply move it up and down to make sure you're doing what is right. I like to leave it in the down position because these three little studs here are going to drive a variation in the oscillation. This oscillation system is not simply up and down. There's pauses in there and that's uh, kind of unique in the design of this reel. Grease on the teeth, grease on the back. You do not need to grease the front. That's not coming in touch with anything. I find the three studs and I place them where the bottom center stud is facing below. That's my starting point. Could have to adjust. 
in that position with the slider down, it usually makes it work where this is coming up and down. If you have it set a different way, you're going to stop. And I've gotten reels in the mail that said, I need my help. I put the, took this apart, put it back together again, and now my oscillation system sticks. Well, that's because those studs on the back of the oscillation gear are out of alignment. So, to test it before you go to cover the reel up. We have this set now. We made sure that the spring is, is inside the case. And simply bring the case over now. Make sure that you've meshed the gears. And it doesn't matter which side you put the first screw in because, well, there's only three of them. They're triangulated, so your choice. I'll put one in the upper right-hand corner just because, well, that's where I put it. You can start anywhere you like. That handle is in the way of that second screw, so let's go and put the other one up on the other side. And this oscillation system, as I mentioned, is kind of unique in that it's a kind of a take on the planetary system for the 302s. They don't go straight up and down either. They kind of stutter step in between there. I'm going to move that handle off to the side so that I can put that last one in. Remember, I just put that handle on as a holder for that main gear. I didn't want that roller bearing sliding out. Now we can tighten this up. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my rod and reel cleaner, a little kitchen scrubby, put a little bit on there, and just clean down the reel. There was a little bit of dirt left on the shoulder up top here. I want to make sure I get that. Clean the back of it. Clean the arms and the bowl. And then wipe it down. So that cleaner is a little bit of a degreaser in there, a little bit of a wax. Helps shine it up nicely. Gonna, there's a little bit of dirt here. Let's get that out of the way as best we can. And uh, let's put the sp spool back on. Give it a test. Well, this is with the anti-reverse off. It's a nice, quiet reel. It's doing what it should do. Remember, it came in because of the bail. It was an issue. Bail, you don't have any... You don't have to slam it, right? Just a simple little turn is tripping it. It's doing everything it should. We'll go over and engage the anti-reverse. Now you'll get the click, click, click. Now this one you don't get as much hammering on because it's a plastic anti-reverse dog. Make sure it stops. Check the override. You can backpedal and fight the reel that way. And what you're hearing there basically is gear noise as opposed to the anti-reverse dog. Sometimes on these Mitchell reels you get click, 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 and sometimes they'll be quiet. People have asked me why. Well, those, those anti-reverse dogs vary from model to model. Some are metal, some are uh, the, the plastic like this one. Some are different uh, teeth arrangements in them. And it's generally the metal on metal slapping where it gets the louder click. Well, that's it. Ken, it's ready to come back to you. It's a beautiful Mitchell 410. We showed you how it's similar. The internal design is very similar with the oscillation gears and that to a Mitchell 300. We explained that the Mitchell 300 has smaller gears. This one is larger. This one is a high speed. This one also has needle bearings on the uh, main gear and in the rotor, which are not present on the 300. But other than that, it's essentially a Mitchell 300 reel. It's uh, built over-engineered, probably bulletproof, and uh, going to last a long time. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it. Again, if you want to see more like this, please subscribe. And uh, to our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. Your efforts are appreciated. To everyone, enjoy the art of real repair, but more importantly, take those reels fishing. Service them and get them out there on the water and get those lines wet. It's uh, what they were meant to do. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.